So welcome back to My Block Strongest Man, where we wanted to go through some more analytics of World's Strongest Men winners from 1977 to 2020. And what I wanted to focus on today is how much body shape influences the expectation of winning. So was it a surprise that that person won given their height, weight, and BMI, or was it expected? Ciao, homie. Welcome to My Block Strongest Man, where we bring attention to the world of strongman and show you how you can mimic those activities using everyday objects all around your own property. If you haven't done so yet, consider subscribing and remember to hit that bell button for all notifications so you'll know whenever I provide all the valuable content every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So without further ado, on to today's topic. And so we can go through this spreadsheet that we've seen in previous videos and see that Bruce Wilhelm, for example, started off as the winner. And we know that Alexei Novikov won in 2020. And look at how those things fall into buckets or bins so that we can have a frequency of each scenario happening and determine whether uh, outcomes were surprises or not. And so what we want to look at is here I have every year that World's Strongest Man happened. And so if we kind of take them all into consideration, that was 43 years from 1977 to 2020. So what I did was I broke that down into the unique winners. So 43 years is really 22 unique winners because there were multiple time winners. And so you have them organized here into most wins, into least wins, and of course, the most guys that won won one time. Wow, that was an alliteration. The most guys that prevailed prevailed one time. Uh, so Puchanowski won five times, and then you had uh, John Paul Sigmerson, Magnus Ver Magnuson, Big Z Zadrunas Zaviskis, and Brian Shaw winning four times each. Bill Kazmaier won three times. Bruce Wilhelm. Jeff Capes and Yoko Ahola won twice, and then every other winner won one time. So that includes Don Reinhout, Jamie Reeves, Ted Vanderpar, Gary Taylor, Magnus Samuelson, Yanni Virtanen, Sven Carlson, Vasil Virastuk, Phil Fister, Eddie Hall, uh, Hapthor Bjornsson, Martins Lises, and Alexei Novikov. So each one time winners, some of them still active, potentially could win again, but for now, one time winners. So then I took some kind of maxes and mins so we can get an idea of body size and the tallest comes out. So I have Excel formulas that kind of have figured this all out for me that the tallest is Ted Vanderpar at 84 inches or seven feet tall. The shortest uh, winner in this list was Gary Taylor at 72 inches or six feet tall. So exactly a foot apart, 12 inches apart. The heaviest was Hafthor Bjornsson at 452 pounds and the lightest was Yoko Ahola at 276 pounds. Then when you look at BMI, Eddie Hall was easily the highest BMI. I think Big Z was the closest to him. And uh, still, Eddie's like four points ahead. And uh, Yanni Virtanen, with a BMI of 34, has the lowest BMI. Although I still continue to doubt that at that height, Yanni weighed that little, right? So Yanni Virtanen at 6'5", 287 is what Google tells me. And that just seems like really slender for a strong man. Maybe it was true and maybe he was super strong. Um, it just seems like an outlier weight for the other ones that I've come across. So what we can do with this data now that we have unique winners in a list is we can group them together into what a histogram in a statistical analysis would refer to as bins or categories or groupings or scenarios. And so what I did first is I did win bins, right? So what I'm saying is I want a grouping of wins, one win, two wins, three wins, four and five. And so then um, what we can look at is this top chart here, and this shows us how frequent each of those scenarios is. So one win is the most frequent here, meaning there are 13 members of the one win club, and you can see it visually, it's a taller bar than the rest of them. So you can kind of quickly visually see that that would be the expectation. So if somebody wins next year, you would expect them not to win again because the most frequent occurrence is one win. Um, if they were to win more than once, it's an anomaly. It's unexpected, right? Based on the statistics we're seeing here. So then I created height bins. And so I just made the lowest bin 70 inches, which is 510, I believe, and then going up in two inch increments. So 
the way that bins work is you see the, the top end. So for example, here in the green is my height histogram, and the one that says 72 below it means it's 70 to 72. It's up to 72. So the number here you see is the max. And so this is saying we have one person uh, up to and including 72 inches, and that was Gary Taylor. And then we look at uh, the rest of the histogram, and you see that the most frequent occurring heights were between 72 and 74 inches and 74 and 76 inches. So between 6 foot and 6'2 and 6'2 and 6'4, you had seven members in each of those categories. So that would be kind of the most... Um, uh, expected outcome for a World's Strongest Man winner. And again, in the future, we can do this kind of analysis for the runners-up and for the third-place finishers as well, and then kind of determine, you know, have some fun determining how different should they have been to win? Like, did that cause them not to win? And so then as we go further down the histogram, we see between the 70, you know, 78-inch max, meaning 76 to 78 inches tall, you had four members of that uh, club, so the second most frequent. And then the further up the chart we go, the fewer and fewer members we have, just one each in the kind of maximum of 80, maximum of 82, and maximum of 84-inch clubs. So... Then for weight bins, I started off with 250, 275, 300, and I went up in increments of 25 pounds up to 475. So nobody's 475, but I didn't want half Thor to be off the chart, right? I wanted you to be able to see him. And so that's why I created the weight bins that way. And so if we look at the weight bin chart, we'll see the most frequent uh, World's Strongest Man winners are below 300 and up to and including 300 pounds. So there's seven seven members who have been in that weight category. And then you have two in the up to 325 pound club. The second most frequent is the up to 300, you know, between 325 and 350 club. And there's five members there. Between 350 and 375 has four members. And then you have... Um, one member between 400 and 425. Uh, you have two between 425 and 450. And then you have one b above 450, let's say, right? And so then you can take the height and weight and compute a BMI, which I've done in previous videos. So you take that BMI and I've created bins for that as well, right? So I started off with a BMI bin of 34% and I go up in 2% increments up to 56 so that again, Eddie Hall doesn't fall off the chart. You can, you can actually see him. And so as you can see in the yellow BMI histogram here, we see kind of uh, low on, on the low end and low on the high end and uh, bulging up in the middle, right? So the most frequent... BMIs are BMIs between 38 and 40 percent and between 42 and 44 percent. And again, with the fall off kind of tailing off toward the end, uh, BMIs between 48 and 50 have two members there. And then you have one between 50 and 52 and one between 54 and 56 being Eddie Hall. I think what I say, 54.1. Yes, 54.1. So this kind of view gives you a look into groupings of height, weight, BMI, and wins so that you can determine, again, what's expected and what's not expected. So I want to now make the argument that Alexei Novikov's win based on these statistics was not as unexpected as the internet would lead you to believe. Like, when he won, everybody said, how could such a small guy win? He's not that tall. He's not that heavy. Like, was World's Strongest Man switched all around to be just speed events to help this guy win? And, you know, of course, the first obvious counter argument to that was he won the max deadlift which is not a speed event it's a static strength event and he beat guys brian shaw size in that event so um you could argue he relied on the straps quite a bit and didn't really have his fingers around the whole bar but hey you know guys brian shaw size had the opportunity to do that as well and you know still did not lift anywhere near what alexi lifted so that's argument number one but i'm here to say argument number two is even the height and weight argument falls apart because let's take a look what's his height and weight alexi is 6'1 and he is 298 pounds with a bmi equaling 39.3 is 73 inches so if we go up to our height histogram that would put him in the 72 to 74 inch bar one of the two most frequently occurring World's Strongest Men winning heights. There are two of them that are equal, yes, but he is in one of the most frequently occurring 
groupings of heights for World's Strongest Men winners. His weight is 298. Let's go to the weight histogram. The most frequent weight grouping is up to 300 pounds, between 275 and 300 pounds. There are seven members in that grouping, and he is in that grouping. So therefore, putting those two things together, the BMI, 39.3, that would put him in the 38 to 40 bar. Again, tied for one of the most frequently occurring groupings of BMIs. So, taking height, weight, and BMI all together, Alexei Novikov, statistically, body size-wise, was zero surprise to win World's Strongest Man 2020. So if we had done this analysis ahead of time, I think that there wouldn't have been so much uproar on the internet about how a guy so small could win and the events must have been speed events to help him to win. And Kevin Ferris is fast too. Like, it's a ridiculous argument. And so... I just wanted to bring you some additional statistics, show you how you can do some histograms in Excel and have some fun with this analytics yourselves to kind of come up with some different twists and turns on these ideas that you might be hearing swirling around the internet and see if they're actually statistically work out or they don't. So thanks again for joining me on my blog, Strongest Man. Again, check the description below for links to my video setup, my strongest, uh, my block strongest man merch, to buddy to supercharge your own channels, and all that good stuff. It's all below. Check it out, and we'll see you next time. So if you like this video and want to learn more about any of the products I described during this video, make sure to check out the links in the description below. So if you like this video and haven't done so yet, please consider subscribing using that button right there. And also stay tuned for some other videos that you might love blooping up right there. This one is the one that YouTube thinks that you will like the best. And this one is the one that I think you will like the best. As always, share this with everyone. And until next time, ciao, homie.